Hi, my name is Stephen Fricker and today I'm going to talk to you about citizen science in the time of COVID. This will be a talk about the Great Southern Bibelets which occurred through 2020 and again just last weekend. And I'll just say uh, thank you for, to Larissa for helping me with the slides before I get started. So first of all, uh, what is the GSB? The GSB is a Bibelets. It's a, which is an intense period of biological surveying. <clears throat> and being an international event, this is an international period of biological surveying using the uh, citizen science uh, platform by Naturalist. What we aim to highlight is, well, the immense biodiversity spread across the Southern Hemisphere, in addition to uh, engaging the public in science and nature-based learning. We also hope to build a network of citizen science practitioners across the Southern Hemisphere, uh, across a number of different environments and, and different backgrounds. This network will help to grow uh, a group of, um, of citizen scientists and a citizen science network, sharing successes and sharing failures so we can learn from each other. Now, how did everything get started? Back in 2020, uh, COVID struck the world and it uh, created a great deal of upheaval and uh, changes to people's lives. But one thing what might have been missed by some of you was that the City Nature Challenge also came to Australia. The City Nature Challenge is an event uh, out of the US, which uh, looks at the urban biodiversity across the, the entire globe, usually centered around urban environments such as cities. It's held in the uh, Northern Spring, usually around uh, our Anzac Day. So there's a few issues and challenges in Australia with this event. Uh, and uh, coming to Australia for the first time in the middle of COVID presented all sorts of challenges. So the organisers of the four cities got together and decided to coordinate and treat this event as a bit more of a collaborative uh, event rather than a, a competition. And this is because this was the first, this is the first time that this event had come to Australia, and the uh, the organisers recognised that they all might lack certain skills, and if we came together, we could all use each other's strengths to build a better uh, event. So we got together and we spoke a lot uh, during um, during the the lead up to the event, mostly on Zoom, which is a new experience for most of us as you can imagine, but it seems like it's a, a part of everyday life these days. During our many conversations, we had an idea sort of evolve that uh, maybe we could uh, do something like this in, uh, in our spring, um, depending on how the City Nature Challenge went. If it went reasonably well, we could, we could try and do a spring event across the Southern Hemisphere or Australia. So, uh, the City Nature Challenge came and went and it was reasonably successful with a lot of engagement. So uh, following uh, about a, a two or three weeks rest, the organisers came together. And who are the organisers? Well, the organisers are uh, Thomas from New South Wales, from Sydney, Peter from Victoria, Michelle, who I'm sure you all know from Queensland, myself, Seamus and Larissa from South Australia. And we were all we were all organising the uh, the City Nature Challenge and um, came together to to actually form the uh, the GSB. In our discussions, we sort of hoped to get around thirty different areas, hopefully in in, in Australia, and uh, have this as an Australian event. But we had a secret weapon. We had Larissa, who is a PhD student at the University of South Australia from Brazil, and she uh, is also a uh, a teacher or was a teacher in Brazil, but also a, a biologist in Brazil. So she had a lot of contacts in South America. I happened to know a few people in South America as well as, uh, and ha had been in contact with um, some people in Africa. So we convinced Michelle, Peter and Thomas that we should make this a Southern Hemisphere event. So we got in contact with a few people, first of all, in South America, namely, uh, Annabella from Argentina, who's involved in GBIF, as well as the City Nature Challenge over there. 
Bianca, who uh, Larissa knew from her time in Brazil, who was a PhD student, was a PhD student, PhD student, recently graduated, and is uh, now working in citizen science in, in the Amazon. Uh, Jessica, who is a, a passionate guide in the Amazon jungle, but she also uh, is involved in nature education through Instagram as well as YouTube. So I, I recommend you check her out. She um, does some amazing work. And then we have Jimmy, who I knew through Twitter, um, who's a, a stream biologist, but also a, a, an educator of, a, of many children. She loves to get out and, uh, and get involved in, in science education in Colombia. So all of these people and many, many, many more were very enthusiastic and loved the idea. So they all got on board. And this led to uh, a number of these Zoom meetings, which uh, we were all unfamiliar with at the time, but became very, very familiar with uh, over the period, discussing how we were going to, to orchestrate this event across such a wide variety of environments uh, and different contexts that different people had. Some were, were very urban, some were very remote and rural areas as well, and had interconnected uh, connectivity um, issues. But luckily we had some um, secret weapons. We had, uh, we had Larissa and um, Bianca who were bilingual, so we could communicate in, um, through them to our Portuguese speakers and um, through Annabella and others to our Spanish speakers, which was a really, um, really great uh, uh, opportunity for us. Now, being that we spoke three or they are, that there are three main languages, we had to uh, look at things like uh, simple things like translating the title. Now, uh, we can't call it the Great Southern Bible. It's in, in Spanish or in Portuguese because while some people would understand what that meant, a lot of people wouldn't. Particularly in the north of Brazil and some rural areas that they only speak Portuguese and in a lot of areas around um, Spanish speaking. Uh, uh, South America, they, they don't speak any English at all. So we did um, initially a, a literal translation into Portuguese and that was fairly well, um, fairly well accepted. Um, but uh, the word Bible, it's caused all sorts of issues in Spanish speaking um, South America. They did, some people didn't like the idea of the, the word or the connotations that it had. So we had to uh, really um, open up the, uh, the idea of how to name this project uh, to the organizers on the ground. So we really had this as a collaborative approach to try and organize the, the Southern Biblets uh, by, by really accepting ideas and, and different people's contexts uh, throughout, throughout our areas that we were hoping to, to tap into. And this was reasonably successful. Um, a lot more successful than I thought it would be. Um, we had uh, 90,000 observations in the, uh, in the first four days in the, in the first year. Uh, this was of um, 12,000 or nearly 13,000 species uh, with, um, with observations made in 12 countries and over three continents with over 3,000 people involved. The observations, as you can see, were quite widely dispersed uh, with, in a, with Australian observations, mainly focused in that southeastern uh, seaboard where most of the population is. Uh, in Africa, we had observations up through Kenya, Botswana, uh, Zambia and Zimbabwe and a, and a fairly, um, fairly solid effort from Cape Town and, and other areas in South Africa. And actually the most observations were actually made in, in, in Cape Town. They had the highest number of observations and the highest number of species. And then in South America, you can see the observations were quite widely, uh, widely dispersed. We had a lot of observations in Northern Argentina and Southern Brazil. We also had a lot of observations in uh, Colombia and Peru and also Ecuador, I believe as well. Now, as you can see here, um, this is a, a chart of all of the observations across our various areas uh, that were involved in various countries. And as you can see, there was a, a, a quite a big increase during the GSB a lot more than the actual observations that were recorded. And this is because of the, the effects of people actually outside our regions that we were, we were collecting data from getting involved. You can also see that there was a big increase in the number of species observed over that particular period. 
and this again is uh, greater than the numbers that were reserved during the GSB, but we think this is a bit of a, a flow on effect of, uh, of the engagement efforts that we, we undertook. And you also can see there was a, a big spike in the number of observers active over the weekend. Now, the uh, observations also were very interesting because we had, ooh, we had a number of, uh, of rare and endangered species, such as the Brazilian bare-faced tamarind, uh, some plant species, and uh, the scrawly stub foot toad as well. So we had a lot of interesting species being observed that don't really get observed that often. We also had some community favourites, such as the um, Arctic minke whale, which we had one beached in Brazil, which caused all sorts of issues on um, social media, and people were very interested in what was going on there. And we also had some other things like uh, Derby's woolly or possum, which was also something that was seen as being quite cute. We also had some previously unrecorded species, such as this ficus species and a few other invertebrates, which was uh, very interesting to us. We um, really uh, found that quite quite interesting that these are uh, the number of um, species being observed actually increased. So what is the contribution to citizen science of these sorts of events? Well, one of the thing is things that, that these sorts of events do bring is an increase in the number of practitioners. So during the month of September last year, when the, uh, the Great Southern Bybits occurred, you'll notice that uh, the number of observations in Australia exceeded 100,000 for the first month, for a single month for the first time. And this means that there are more, there's more data being collected. It is focused on one particular period. And hopefully we, we, we think, or we think that hopefully there'll be a, a flow on effect. And as you can see the chart below that, uh, you can see the, the increase year on year that has occurred uh, over the, that, that year and in, in the previous year. Some other outcomes was uh, it, the, uh, the GSB gave opportunities for uh, connecting with teachers in the classroom, um, which did occur in a number of our regions. So here's Jimmy from Col uh, Columbia connecting with some, uh, some primary schoolers and um, getting them engaged in, in science. Uh, there was also some opportunities for university groups, such as this other one from Columbia, from um, uh, our other area in Columbia, uh, who organized to do a, uh, a tour around the hills, around the, uh, around the city. And, and they did a number of engagement events with, with local communities, teaching them about um, the biodiversity of their region. There's also good opportunities for, uh, uh, for engaging the public in, um, in citizen science, looking at things like camera traps and, uh, and explaining to them uh, the importance of biodiversity in their particular area. There was also a uh, increase in new iNaturalist users uh, with a, um, with a big increase in the numbers around the area where people are obviously uh, uh, interested in biology, but um, again, um, probably not taking as much notice uh, of these things as they, as they are now. There was also new species recorded, such as this, um, this little isopod from Victoria, which is actually an endangered species. Uh, and there's also uh, enhancing of the identification tools with more species being observed, more pictures being uploaded and greater input to the uh, to the AI that runs behind iNaturalist. We had some really good um, anecdotal uh, responses, such as um, these, these ones here, where um, people express their, uh, their delight at uh, the GSB uh, being used as a tool to engage students uh, with nature and connecting, um, connecting them with the biodiversity awareness. Leading up to the GSB this year, we also, um, in, in the earlier part of the year, set up something called the GS Bio Group, which is where most of the or large number of the organisers have um, submitted their observations. So we can uh, see over, over the year how, uh, how different um, species are reserved in different areas. And this was um, something that slide put together a few weeks ago, but um, that uh, number of observations now has actually, I think, doubled. And if you are interested in this sort of topic and you want to find out how uh, these sorts of projects contribute to iNaturalist and uh, our understanding of biodiversity, I do encourage you to read the recent paper by Thomas, uh, which is available uh, free online. I can give that to you if you, um, if you wish to. Uh, I'd also like to say that um, look, keep an eye out for our, um, our 
results from this year, which um, uh, should be out very, very soon. Thank you.